I'm Jimmy Fee, and these are some of my surf casting essentials. <coughs> so when I'm talking surf casting essentials here, I'm not talking about what's in my plug bag, what's on my belt, what I'm bringing out into the surf with me. This is gonna be the gear that stays in the truck, goes with me on every trip, and is there just in case I need it. The foundation of that surf fishing support system is this right here. This is the Yeti Go Box 30. This is the middle of the road option for them. They have a 15 and a 60. The 30 is all I need for surf casting. This stays back in my truck and it is loaded up with those surf fishing essentials. Inside the box, it comes with a drop-in caddy right here, helps you further organize the gear, a divider so you can have either one big space compartment there or drop it into two, and what they call the pack addict. And this is gonna be for your more sensitive materials. Smaller stuff, more easily lost, you can put it here. So the first item that's gonna go in here is my first aid kit. This is gonna be able to treat you know, any hook punctures, any fin punctures, anything, any injuries you run into just to get you between the surf and some more serious medical attention if God forbid you need it. So always a good idea to have this with you just to be prepared. Long lines of being prepared is a bag of spare batteries. I've got enough in case my headlamp runs out of juice, my lights run out of juice just having those ready to go and replace. And these I'm gonna tuck up here in the pack attic and I'll have those ready to go. Now when I'm hitting the surf, I already have a light and a backup light with me. But in case something happens, they get wet, the batteries run out, I drop them and lose them. I have these two here in my go box as backups. Next up is something I bet a lot of you don't bother bringing with you on surf fishing trips and that's spare boot laces. Now it took me a couple times to realize this was an essential item. All I had to do was get to the surf, gear up, go to lace up those boots and pop, have some old laces break on me. So since then I always bring a couple extra sets of boot laces, make sure I have them ready just in case. Nothing more frustrating trying to surf fish with a boot that's not totally laced down and tight. Also have some backups of this right here. Whenever we post a surf fishing video on On The Water, one of the most frequently asked questions we get is, what is that on your finger? So what this is, is a medical bandage made by a company called Andover. This is called Coflex. And what this does is it adheres only to itself. It's very flexible, it's very lightweight. And when I'm fishing with braided line, making long casts with heavy gear and braided line, I wrap it around my fingers like that, tear it off, and that's usually good. It will last a tide, keep my finger protected from cuts from the braid. I know some guys are gonna say, just build up a callus on your casting finger, but we can't all be that tough. Some of us have city hands. So this is what I use every trip. I used to use hockey tape, but uh, I actually graduated to this a few years ago. I think it's a little more flexible. It lasts a little bit longer. It's become my go-to casting tape right here. Next, we have my hook changing kit. Now this is kind of a travel version of my hook changing kit. In the winter time when I'm changing the hooks on dozens and dozens of plugs, I have a much larger set of split rings, of spare hooks, but this is just supposed to get me through a single surf fishing trip. So I have a couple replacement hooks for each of the key sizes, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. I've got split rings as replacements. In this kit, I also have some spare swivels and snaps to make up some new leaders if I need to. And of course, a hook changing kit would be no good without a set of split ring pliers. So I have a set of those as well. Now I talked about having some materials to build new leaders if I needed to, but I also have some pre-tied leaders here in these things called rig wraps. These are small little plastic boxes that have a ring around which you can wrap a pre-tied leader. So I have a bunch of these set with three to four liters already tied loaded in there. So when I run out of liters in my plug bag, I just take a rig wrap that's already loaded up, replace that in there, and it's ready to go. So when you are taking a liter out of a rig wrap, you wanna make sure, it's like diffusing a bomb, you wanna make sure you grab the right wire. So you put, grab the liter that you put in last, unfurl it, and when all goes right, it comes out just as clean as that. You've got a liter ready to fish, rig wrap goes right back in the plug bag. So another item that is a both a safety and kind of a functional tool is a set of manly pliers. So I bring manly pliers with me in worst case scenarios. I get a hook in the hand. It's a lot of times it's easier to push it through, cut the barb off with a set of pliers. Or if I am changing hooks on lures where I'm not using a split ring, I can cut the eye of the hook and then attach them with these heavy duty manly pliers. When prepping for a season in the surf, you can never have too much leader material. 
So I have 100 yard spools of a few different sizes. I happen to really like fluorocarbon when I'm surf fishing. I know a lot of fishermen like monofilament. I like fluoro not just because it's less visible underwater, but also because it's gonna be more abrasion resistant. It's gonna be a little harder. I go through a lot of leader material throughout the course of a surf fishing season. If it gets nicked, if a bluefish scrapes it up a little bit, I'm changing that leader. I don't wanna leave anything to chance. So I will burn through a ton of this line. So I bring spools, 100 yard spools of 30 pound test, 40 pound test, and 60 pound test. You know, sometimes if I have some 50, I will use that as well. But depending on the size of the fish I'm catching, whether I'm fishing at daytime or at night, or whether it's a really rocky environment or a sandy environment, that's gonna determine what size leader material I'm using. And a lot of times those rig wraps, I will have some that are spooled up with all 30 pound leaders, some that are spooled up with all 60 or wherever in between. Hook sharpener, essential, essential tackle, no matter what kind of fishing you're doing, especially surf fishing, if you use bucktail jigs or soft plastic jigs, Make sure you're touching up those jig heads, keeping that nice and sharp. A weighted treble hook. Now I know you're not allowed to snag and drop bait fish for striped bass anymore, but you can still use it on a circle hook. You can still chunk with it. And whenever I'm out there and I see schools of bunker, I wanna make sure I have a way to get that fresh bait. You know, I'll take, snag the bait, transfer it to a circle hook. Sometimes that's the ticket to catching the biggest fish of the trip. Most of the time I'm bringing a 10-0 or 7-0 size weighted treble hook, and I'll have a couple different sizes and options there. So another thing I bring along is a knife. This happens to be a folding fillet knife, and I like this because it serves double duty for me. One, if I get some bunker with that snag hook and I'm gonna chunk it up, I can use it as a bait knife. If I catch something I intend on eating, you know, a bluefish, a fluke, a sea bass, a sea robin, I can clean it before I head home, not bring that whole mess home. So that is why Having a knife on hand, ready to go, is another important tool. Along those lines, for bringing those fresh fillets home and for keeping the bait fresh, I have a couple extra Ziploc bags. So if I catch something I wanna keep, I'll put the fillets in there, keep it fresh if I don't have a cooler with me. Or if I catch some bait, I will put the bait in here. That's especially important with bait fish like bunker. You don't want them directly contacting ice. So I'll keep that bunker off the ice to keep it as fresh, smelling, and appealing to the striped bass as possible. And last but not least, speaking of scents, I don't even think I could surf fish anymore without some garbage man anise extract. Now, I don't just put it on my baits anymore. You know, sometimes I go out there and I do, you know, a little for the, little for the fish, a little for Jim. <coughs> that's real, that's real extract. Oh my God. <coughs> Hold on. Oh, it's been in my water. Well, give me a second. <coughs> Nobody's gonna believe that was real extract, but it really was. That was some spicy stuff. Sometimes even, you know, a little here, hit the pulse points with it. You know, I wanna attract the bass, I wanna go all in. So, Garbage Man and East Extract, that's the last surf fishing essential. that I have. So pretty much I have my surf casting kit right here, ready to go for the season. We still have a month or two before the stripers are back, but this as is, is ready to go. This will sit in the back of my truck and I might restock it if I need to on occasion, but pretty much everything I'm going to need while surf fishing over the course of the season, except for the stuff in my plug bag and the stuff on my belt is gonna be right here, ready for action. If you have some more surf fishing essentials, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to check out onthewooder.com and on the Wooders YouTube channel for more surf fishing content coming this season.